Now I've covered a lot of stories, but this one has me stepping out of my comfort zone, literally. I'm all suited up and ready to meet the real stars of this story, the bees, and well, their keeper, Dwayne, with his son in tow. As I will find out, this is more than just beekeeping, it's about conservation, livelihoods, and the delicate balance of nature. This is one of the make because the aggressiveness of the bees. Good. What? If you look at it, you see the um the cells get some little liquid inside. Yeah. I can't see anything. What do you mean liquid? Yeah, there's no start working inside the cells. Mm. I don't know if you and probably must have seen it, but mm. there's a little bit of honey in it. But it, now it's not really honey season. They ever it's, attack you? If, if, you yeah. Have a honey attack? Not from the boxes. I get attacked while scratching. What's going on here with these? <laughs> well, there's the worker bees there. And the worker bees there are female uh, bees. Mm. Yeah. Hold this like this. Give me this. I hope I'm broken up this thing. No, no. This particular box is a big box. This is an 18 by 20 box. Mm -hmm. I would get like up to three and a half gallon honey from this box. Serious? Yeah, this particular box. The one I would get like three gallon. Ah. Most of the other one, but this particular one, I would get like three and a half gallon because this is a bigger box. Over over what period? Uh, well, the honey flow around here that start from late September to December, early January. The bees feed primarily in the mangrove forests. For the last four years, I would get in excess of 50 gallons of honey. And I would manage the money with my family. A single parent father, four kids, and that is what we look for for my livelihood. The bees and the mangrove forests became a lifeline for Dwayne at a time when he was beset by the tragic loss of his wife and then when he had a stroke that limited what he could do physically. His bees has been keeping my family going and this mangrove forest, all these trees, eh? When I come out and see them blossom, I would smile because I know that the bees are getting food and my family going to get food too. At the National Agriculture Research and Extension Center, the Mangrove Center guides local communities to recognize the value of mangrove forests, not just for conservation, but as a sustainable source of income that encourages preservation rather than destruction. So they provide nursery gong for our fish industry. So our fisheries have a direct link to our healthy mangrove ecosystem. And at the community levels, um, we have been working with local communities to do apiculture in mangrove areas. So beekeeping and the delicious golden mangrove honey that you get from the black mangroves, um, that is another avenue in terms of livelihood for persons in local communities that promote and sustain mangrove conservation and restoration. Uh, of course, this is not automatic. You have been helping farmers to see how they can benefit from mangrove forests. Yes. So we started with a pilot project that looked at training persons in the local community in um, beekeeping, as well as the other value added products you can get from beekeeping. So producing um, soaps, honey soap, as well as hair food and beautiful scented candles. What we decided last year is that we want to expand that. So we conducted an assessment of what are the livelihood opportunities um, along all six coastal regions with the intention of investing further resources to allow persons to benefit financially from the continued restoration of our mangrove ecosystem and you know, promote sustainability. So we've re-signed an MOU with the Ghana Livestock Development Authority. Um, they have the expertise with regards to um, beekeeping and mangroves. So uh, what we're going to be working with them to is procure uh, PPEs, beekeeping equipment and other supporting um, equipment for community persons and as well as train new persons to get into beekeeping as well as support the expansion of existing um, apiaries so that they can take advantage, as I said, as we continue to do mangrove restoration along our coast. Do you find that mangrove forests are misunderstood and that they're not really considered forests and so people feel more free to destroy them? Yes, yes. So, so that has been something that we've been working on in terms of our public education and awareness program. And that's part of what our mangrove center is in doing. 
Um, because traditionally we have viewed our mangroves as a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> you know, it's blocking the ocean, the mosquitoes that comes with it. So we, we've been trying to change the mindset of persons to view it um, as far as, but and also view and understand the importance of the mangroves in terms of our coastal resilience, the beautiful biodiversity that is supported with my mangroves. So one of the other um, activities that we're looking at is um, ecotourism linked to mangroves. You know, when you go out onto the foreshore, the bird watching that um, activity that can take place, as well as linking that to, you know, visiting apiary so that you can get an understanding of how, you know, more honey is harvested and taste the uh, beautiful mangrove honey as well. Mangroves are found in 123 countries. It is estimated that Guyana has 22,000 hectares of mangrove forests. The government has implemented a series of initiatives to protect and restore mangrove forests, recognizing their critical role in coastal defense, biodiversity protection and sustainable livelihoods. As you know, Guyana is below the coastline. We are vulnerable to flooding, to the effects of climate change and protecting coastline is very important. And that is why we have embarked along with a partnership with the European Union um, we have also received, and I must say that the European Union and the UK has been good partners with us with regards to our forests, the maintenance of our forests, and the restoration and protection of mangroves um, along our coastline, which is very essential and critical to protecting our people um, along the coastline. And as you are aware, 80% of our people live on just the 8 or 9% of the coast. So it is very critical and important that we continue the mangrove restoration and protection project. And I want to thank the EU for being a good partner with us in ensuring that this project is a realization today. I'll be honest, I've never been this close to any bee, let alone so many bees before. And it was frightening at first. But there's something fascinating about stepping into their world a world that depends entirely on these towering mangrove trees. These forests don't just protect our coastlines, they provide a home, a food source and an income for beekeepers who have learned to work with nature, not against it. And people like Duane are the perfect advocates for why mangrove forests should be protected. So the mangrove forest is very important. For, and then the other thing is today, the air that comes through from the mango forest is a better fresh air that we're breathing out here. Now you can the road save the olive carbon dioxide from the vehicles and this kind of thing. It's a more fresh air. So it filters the air that we breathe, it protects our city fence for us here, and then it is good for livelihood. For the newsroom, I'm Neil Marks.